A map of the United States may look fixed, but in several states it's slowly disappearing and nobody notices. These are American states that will disappear soon. Along the southern edge of the United States, where the Mississippi River meets the Gulf of Mexico, Louisiana is slowly losing ground. On the map, its coastline looks irregular and fragile, broken into bays, marshes, and narrow strips of land. When on the ground, that fragility is already turning into disappearance. Louisiana's coastal plains are one of the lowest-lying regions in the area, and much of its sits at or just above sea level. Large areas of Louisiana are made up of wetlands and barrier islands that rely on sediment to stay intact. For thousands of years, the Mississippi River built this land by depositing mud and silt as it flowed into the Gulf, but modern levee systems keep the river confined to a narrow channel now. Sediment no longer spreads naturally across the delta. Without constant replenishment, the land begins to sink. This sinking, known as subsidence, combines with rising sea levels to accelerate land loss. In some cold Coastal parishes, the shoreline moves inland by tens of meters every year. Marshes turn into open water, islands shrink, fragment, and vanish. Places like Isle de Jean Charles show this process clearly. Once surrounded by marshland, the island has now lost most of its area, leaving only a narrow strip of land connected by a single road. Communities that live there for generations have already begun relocating inland. Storms amplify the problem. Hurricanes push seawater deep into wetlands, eroding fragile ground while breaking apart barrier islands that had once absorbed the wave energy. Each major storm leaves a coast more exposed than before. From above, satellite imagery shows Louisiana's shape changing over decades, bays expand, coastlines blur, and areas that were once marked as land are now water. This is not a future projection, it's a measurable ongoing process. On the map, the state looks whole. On the coast, the edges are slipping away. But as the coastline pulls back in the gulf, the map shifts east toward a state built even closer to the water. Moving east along the Gulf Coast and down the southeastern edge of the United States, the map narrows into a long and flat peninsula. This is Florida, a state whose geography places it closer to the ocean than almost anywhere else in the country. Florida is one of the lowest lying states in the U.S. Much of South Florida sits less than two meters above sea level, and cities like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach are built on flat coastal plains with almost no elevation change inland. From the air, the land appears to be smooth and level, with water never far out of view. What makes Florida especially vulnerable is not its coastline, but what lies beneath. The state is built on porous limestone. Unlike rocky or clay-based ground, limestone allows water to pass through easily, meaning that seawater does not only approach from the coast, it rises from below. As sea levels increase and salt water pushes upward through the ground, flooding streets and storm drains and foundations, in places like Miami Beach, flooding now occurs during high tides alone. Roads will fill with water, not because waves crash over them, but because the ocean is pushing up from underneath. Barrier islands line much of Florida's coast. This narrow strip of sand protects the mainland from waves and storms, but barrier islands shift constantly. Erosion will reshape them year after year, narrowing beaches while weakening natural defenses. When storms strike, these islands absorb the damage first, often losing large portions of land in a single event. Further inland, wetlands like the Everglades once acted as a natural buffer, slowing water movement and absorbing overflow. But drainage projects and development have altered those systems, reducing their ability to protect coastal areas. Unlike Louisiana, where land sinks and disappears into the marsh, Florida's threat is much more quiet. The shape of the state remains visible on the map, but the ground beneath it is becoming less and less reliable. As the peninsula narrows, the danger doesn't disappear. It moves inland, following the rivers that supply the driest parts of the country. Moving west across the map and away from coasts into the interior of the southwest, the danger shifts. Here, land is not disappearing underwater. It's disappearing because the systems that support life on it are quietly failing. Arizona and Nevada are defined by deserts, the Sonoran Desert stretching across southern Arizona, while the Mojave dominates southern Nevada. These landscapes were never meant to support large populations, yet cities like Phoenix, Tucson, and Las Vegas grew rapidly, built on the assumption that water would always arrive from somewhere else. And that somewhere else is the Colorado River. The river begins in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, flowing southwest while cutting through Utah, Arizona, Nevada, Nevada and California before reaching Mexico. Along its path, massive reservoirs like Lake Powell and Lake Mead store water for tens of millions of people, while on the map, these lakes look stable. In reality, their shorelines have been retreating year after year. Lake Mead near Las Vegas has dropped to historically low levels. As the water recedes, white mineral rings mark where the lake had once reached. Boat ramps end in dry ground. Intake pipes designed to draw water are being extended deeper as levels fall. Arizona relies heavily on long-distance 
canals that pull Colorado River water hundreds of kilometers inland. Phoenix, one of the fastest growing cities in the country, exists in a desert basin where natural rainfall is minimal. Without imported water, the land simply cannot support its current scale. What makes the region especially fragile is that the land itself offers no backup. There are no large natural lakes, and groundwater aquifers recharge slowly if at all. Once water use exceeds replenishment, the ground begins to sink, crack, and destabilize. From above, the southwest still looks open and expansive. Cities shine brightly at night, roads stretch across desert basins, but beneath that image is a shrinking margin for error. Arizona and Nevada are losing the conditions that allow large parts of them to remain inhabited. Yet water loss is not the only way that land can vanish. Far to the north, the ground itself begins to lose its shape. Moving far north on the map beyond the lower 48 states, the landscape expands into something completely different. Alaska is vast, cold, and sparsely populated, but what makes it unique is not just its size. It's the fact that the land is changing in ways that make large parts of the state increasingly unstable. Much of the state is built on permafrost ground that has remained frozen for thousands of years. This frozen layer acts like a foundation, holding soil in place, supporting roads, buildings, pipelines, and entire towns. But the foundation is no longer reliable. Across the interior, in areas like Fairbanks, Bethel, Nome, and large sections of the Yukon River Basin, the permafrost is thawing, and as it warms, the ground loses structure. Soil collapses unevenly, roads buckle and crack, buildings tilt, and some places, land that once appeared solid will turn to marsh or mud. This process is not uniform. On the map, Alaska looks unchanged, while on the ground, the surface becomes unpredictable. A stretch of road may remain intact for years, and then suddenly sinks. Along the western and northern coast, the problem intensifies. Some villages sit low on the sea, and as ice forms later and melts earlier, waves hit the coast with more force. Without frozen ground to anchor to the land, erosion accelerates, and entire sections of coastline collapse into the ocean. Inland, thawing permafrost affects lakes and wetlands. Some lakes will drain suddenly when the ground beneath gives way, while others expand as surrounding soil subsides. This reshapes entire regions, altering travel routes that communities have relied on for generations. What makes the state's situation especially challenging is its distance. Communities are far apart, infrastructure is limited, repairing roads and relocating towns requires enormous effort and cost. In some cases, moving is the only option. On the map, the state remains massive, while on the surface, parts are quietly coming undone. From frozen ground to cultivated land, a map shifts south again into regions that appear stable but depend entirely on what's below the surface. Moving south and east from the Great Plains into the center of the United States, the map opens into wide and flat land. States like Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, Kansas, and parts of Missouri form the agricultural core of the country. And from above, the region may look stable, orderly, and permanent. Long fields stretch to the horizon, roads follow straight lines, towns are evenly spaced. But stability depends almost entirely on the soil beneath. The Midwest sits on some of the most fertile soil on Earth. Much of it formed thousands of years ago by glaciers and ancient river systems. Thick layers of topsoil once made the region ideal for farming, but now that foundation of the landscape in many places is being steadily worn away. Across large parts of Iowa and Illinois, farmland slopes gently rather than lying completely flat. During heavy rains, water moves quickly across the fields, carrying soil with it. Streams and drainage ditches collect the runoff and transport it away. Over time, fields lose their depth. What once took thousands of years to form can disappear within decades. Wind plays a role, especially in states like Kansas and Nebraska. In dry conditions, exposed soil lifts and travels. The land doesn't vanish suddenly. It thins out, and year after year, fields become more dependent on management to remain productive. Rivers like the Missouri and Mississippi collect lost soil downstream, while farmland upstream erodes, sediment builds elsewhere, reshaping riverbanks and floodplains. The geography of the Midwest is constantly redistributed, even though it looks unchanged at a glance. What makes the process easy to overlook is scale. Individual fields do exist, crops still grow, towns function, but the long-term balance is shifting. In some areas, soil loss exceeds natural replacement many times over. As the ground thins out, farming becomes more harsh to sustain without increasing intervention. Land that once supported diverse crops becomes fragile. Margins shrink, and fields that look identical on the map do not perform the same on the ground. But not all change happens quietly inland. Along the western edge of the country, multiple forces meet at once. Moving west on the map, the United States ends where the land meets the Pacific Ocean. California stretches along that edge. Long and varied, it's defined by mountains, valleys, deserts, and coastline. It may look solid, permanent, and powerful, but California is one of the most unstable states in the country. Not because of 
one threat, but because of several overlapping ones. Along the coast, the land is slowly eroding. Cliffs in places like Big Sur, Pacifica, and parts of Southern California collapse into the ocean as waves undercut the shoreline. Beaches are narrow, bluffs retreat inland, homes and roads built decades ago sit closer to the edge than intended. The coastline that California is known for is constantly reshaping itself. Inland, the Central Valley tells a different story. The long agricultural basin stretches from Redding to Bakersfield and has been sinking for decades. Heavy groundwater pumping causes the land to subside as underground aquifers compress. In some places, the ground has dropped several meters over the last century. Canals tilt, roads crack, flood risk increases as the land lowers relative to nearby rivers. To the east, the Sierra Nevada mountains control California's water supply. Snowpack acts as a natural reservoir, releasing water slowly in spring and summer. But snowfall patterns are becoming less predictable, and when snow arrives as rain instead, water rushes downhill quickly, leaving less stored for dry months. Fire reshapes the state from another direction. In Northern California, the Sierra foothills and Southern California chaparral zones, repeated wildfires strip hillsides of vegetation. Without roots to hold soil in place, erosion accelerates. Mudslides follow winter rains, removing entire layers of land in one single event. What makes California unique is that these processes overlap. Coastal erosion, sinking valleys, shifting water systems, and fire-driven landscape loss all occur within the same state, sometimes within the same year. These states are not all disappearing at once. They're changing slowly, unevenly, and often quietly. Coasts retreat, ground sinks, water moves away, soil thins out, and foundations lose their certainty. On the map, the borders remain the same, while on the ground, conditions that once made places stable are now shifting. Disappearance doesn't always mean vanishing. Sometimes it means becoming harder to live on, harder to maintain, and harder to recognize. And in many parts of the United States, that process has already begun. The world is full of mysteries and we're here to crack them. Thanks for watching World Crack. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.